again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along, and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, today we have a beautiful peacock feather painting. I'm just going to be using my three standard brushes uh, and I'm going to be starting out with just a purple background. So I have on my palette uh, paper here just an ultramarine blue, red, and white. Go ahead and check the description box below for a more complete uh, and detailed materials list. Okay, let's go ahead and just jump right in. So I'm going to start with my uh, largest brush. So this is a big flat wash brush. And we are going to mix up a purple. So I have a little bit of water here. And I most likely will use all of this paint uh, here for the background. And then go ahead and just get a fresh piece of palette paper for when we come back uh, and do our peacock feather. So really starting simple today. Nothing too tricky. Uh, just going to do a purple background. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of white. Uh, just grab it and pull it right in there and create a purple that you like. You can also bypass this step by buying purple, just a bottle of purple. But I thought I'd uh, just, you know, kick it up a little notch and mix colors today. Um, and then we're just gonna go ahead and go back and forth across our canvas with horizontal brush strokes and get this all filled in purple. So. Remember, a little bit of water always helps that paint go nice and smooth. And you do kind of want to bring the brush stroke all the way off the side of the canvas. So that's typically how I get really even brush stroke consistency is by taking the brush stroke all the way off the canvas. And this is where sometimes things do get messy. Uh, so you'll want to be uh, wearing your apron, got my apron on, and then I've got this nice little table easel that I got, a little bit fancier, um, but you can also just use like, you know, a disposable tablecloth or packing paper, parchment paper, butcher paper, whatever you want to call that, newspaper works well as well. And then once you get this all filled in and consistent and a beautiful, nice purple, we're just going to let this dry for a few minutes and come back and do our feather. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, welcome back. I have a nice dry purple background. Got a fresh piece of palette paper here with my primary colors along with a phalo green, uh, black and white. I always like to do two little uh, areas of white for myself uh, because I tend to usually use one for mixing of colors and then one for white itself. So let's go ahead and use our medium sized brush. Uh, I did also get fresh water uh, and we're gonna mix up a brown. But this is another one where you can totally do a little shortcut uh, and just buy brown, a bottle of brown if you would prefer. Um, but I'm going to mix mine today. So the way that I usually like to make brown is by starting with orange. So orange is going to be yellow and red. And then adding a little bit of blue. So to make browns, what we end up doing is going across the color wheel. Uh, so in this case, I'm blending two opposite colors of orange and blue. For more information about color theory, check out my acrylic boot camp course. Uh, it's going to be ready any minute now. <laughs> it's actually coming along quite nicely. Uh, and the first 50 patrons on my Patreon uh, are going to get access to that class. So check that out. Uh, we also have printables. Uh, traceable printables available on Patreon, uh, sneak peeks, and exclusive patron-only giveaways. So check that out in the description box below if you're interested. Now I have a warm brown here, and I'm going to add just a pinch of white and create, to me, kind of what looks like a nut. Not sure what kind of nut, like a fat almond I guess <laughs> sort of 
chestnut, I think is maybe what I'm thinking. And this big sort of bulbous shape, that's gonna be that main uh, inner part of the feather. Okay, so just using that brown to create that shape. And then I'm also going to do inside of here a nice kind of oval, circular oval kind of in between there. And then I'm going to fill it in with that brown and medium brush. Just around the circle. leaving that part empty. This is just the base color. Okay, that looks good to me. And now while it's still wet, uh, we're gonna do just a little bit of variation. So I'm gonna grab some white and yellow and mix like a much lighter yellowish beige. And I'm going to start adding some of this feather texture now. You want to be feather light with the feather texture. Very little light brush strokes, very little pressure pushing down just the tip of the brush. Getting some of that wet on wet blending action going on. I'm going to grab a tiny bit of black and I'm going to make a darker brown. You may also want to make it a little bit richer with some red. If you were using out of the bottle colors, you would use like a burnt sienna uh, with a tiny bit of white and then this would maybe end up being like a burnt umber. So it's like a warmer brown and a cooler brown. And again, just making it not quite so solid one color. Okay, there's going to be a lot of different colors that we add, um, but that's fine for the base. Go ahead and rinse that brush. Okay, and I'm going to take some of my phthalo green. My favorite color. Love this gorgeous turquoise. And I'm going to be going here in my little oval but what we want to do first is to create like a little bean shape so we're working from our outside in here leaving that little bean shape on the inside bare because we're going to fill that in with blue in just a moment Okay, and just getting that filled into the edge. Nice, clean transition. And in the same way, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of a darker blue. Look at how pretty those colors are. I just love that. I'm a big fan of the ocean and water. I'm a Pisces, so I love, I'm a fish. Love the water. That's why I think this is my favorite color. We want to have the brush strokes kind of framing the inner shapes going around. We want to already be thinking like all those little feather tendrils. Rinsing my brush. Now I'm going to grab a medium blue. So blue mixed with a little bit of white. And you can also just add like a tiny pinch of black. So this would be a toned down blue. About like so. A navy color. And then you're just gonna come in here in that little bean shape. with that beautiful blue color and just get that all filled in as well. Looks good. Okay. 
we're actually going to leave that alone for now. Uh, and let's go ahead and work with some green. I'm going to make a darker version of that aqua. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. That's going to give me that main feather color. And again, we're just going to be using a very, very light texture and just the tips of our brushes. We want to start from underneath here and then we're going to go around and come up and bring that brush stroke just all the way off of the canvas. I'm going to go right underneath here and we're going to start building our feather. Lots of little brush strokes are going to come out from the center here. And you're actually going to go all the way off the side of the canvas with these. So lots and lots of these brush strokes. That's what makes this so lovely. This is just the first color of, I think, four colors. So many more colors to add, so don't be too worried. We're kind of just getting our shape all set with this. So same idea, make sure you come up and around first. You can really already see the painting begin to take shape. Okay, and then we're actually gonna have some of these brush strokes come up and off the canvas in the top part here and then have like a little gap and that way you can kind of peekaboo see some purple still and that often happens to feathers as they get like stuck together like that look at how pretty that already looks very nice okay so i'm just going to come in here and add quite a few brush strokes, not being super duper like perfectionistic with where I'm laying those brush strokes, just because I know there's gonna be so many colors added that it's not gonna be really important where every single brush stroke is put. So it's gonna be more of a cumulative effect. Don't get too caught up in perfection. Okay, that's looking really good to me. Got our basic shape all down. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our baby brushes now. Okay, smallest one. And we're gonna add some highlights and some shadows. Let's start with a darker color. So I'm actually gonna use a pretty dark green uh, which is just going to be that phthalo green by itself. And I think I'll add a pinch of yellow just to make it a little bit more vibrant. Uh, and you want to go right along the outside edge here. It's a nice place to add a shadow. And a little bit of water mixed into these colors, particularly for these next few steps where we're going to be adding uh, all of these colors kind of in the same area. You want to have the paint go nice and smooth. So a little bit of water is really going to aid you in that. Just a little bit of shadow. Highlights and shadows is what it's all about. So that is how I tend to always teach my paintings is basic shapes and then base colors and then highlights and shadows. Okay, you can already see a little bit more depth forming in our composition. So again, just adding highlights and shadows, being very light handed with my brush right now and making sure I have a little bit of water mixed into the paint as always makes it go nice and smooth. Okay. We don't want to spend too long 
on any one color in this painting either. When I first started painting this, I got to like the part where I had just created the shape and I was like, I hate it. <laughs> uh, and that happens a lot when you're an artist, to be totally honest. Uh, there's a process of a love-hate relationship with your paintings. But I, I told myself, just go ahead and keep working it. And uh, don't judge it until the end. So I like to tell my students that don't judge a work in progress uh, by where it's at right now because you gotta add all those highlights and shadows and everything. And um, then I ended up really liking the results. So I'm glad I didn't stop. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab a highlight color. So it's just gonna be a really light green. That's a little bit too light, even though I really like that color. I think it might be a little too light as well. Okay, about like so. Just took some of that phthalo green, add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. Really starting to get some interest here. And you kind of want to exaggerate all those flowy, beautiful shapes. That's what peacock feathers are so beautiful, right? Is they have gorgeous colors, but they're also like so graceful. So you want to accentuate those graceful curves. This is looking very pretty. Not making every single brush stroke go the full length. Okay, so they're just little half and a quarter brush strokes. Little flicks of the wrist. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and do some of our darkest shadows. So I'm actually going to work with black now. I'm going to go back into my eye of the feather and I'm actually going to do a nice little shadow swoop underneath the black there or underneath the blue with black rather and then right underneath the teal part as well just swooping that around again just halfway not all the way around it's a shadow not an outline Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of a watered down black and going from the top part here, I'm going to have a couple brush strokes that kind of come down, accentuating the graceful shape and around. Okay, and then a few throughout our composition all over, just adding some darkest shadows, some depth and some interest, and a couple of brush strokes coming up here too. Be careful not to pull the green too much in there. A little bit is okay. Okay. Very, very pretty. The versions that I paint for class are almost always a little bit simpler because I do it faster and I'm explaining it as I paint it. But I think this one looks really pretty. A little bit looser. Okay, now we're going to do some light highlights and an accent color and we are actually almost done, you guys. Believe it or not. I know this, this one has kind of a lot of steps. Uh, so it's going to actually stay inside of the eye really quick and go ahead and finish that off. Uh, so I'm going to take a little bit of a light yellow. This is going to be a nice highlight color. I'm going to go on the outside edge here and I'm going to add just a few little highlight brush strokes. Look at how pretty that looks on the outside edge. of the brown. 
don't want to have necessarily any green in that. I say that and then I pull green right through. <laughs> there we go. Okay, just along the outside edge. I'm going to grab a tiny bit of pink. And I just think this is a really pretty accent color. And add a few brush strokes of that as well. I have a little bit of brown here too. So I'm kind of mixing like an in-between brown and pink color. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna even do a little bit of a darker one over here. Every brush stroke is important. So you see me going fast, but don't speed yourself up to try to, you know, keep speed with me. If you need to slow down, slow down. And then let's take a little bit of white. And this is where you wanna have clean white. So I've not needed to access my white store there. Uh, so I'm not just using what I, what I had already. And that's fine. Although I may use that in a minute. In every little area. Okay. And then also back in here. If you're painting along, I have created a Facebook group called the Art Club, which is an art share designed for my students to post their artwork. So you can share your art there, whether it be from painting along with me or just on your own. That's been really fun. That's also where I do live monthly Q and A's and kind of like hangout sessions. Uh, so you can see my beautiful face. <laughs> Let's do a little highlight on the top part and the inside of our blue here. So you know, I, now I am using that extra white and just a little boop brush stroke there. Oh my gosh, looking really cute. Okay, and then the piece de la resistance is actually done with the back of my brush. And I'm just going to dip in the back of my brush here, and in a few different areas, I'm going to accentuate the curves by doing these little 3D dots. You can go back over them if you want. This is actually a trick that I learned way back in the day when I was doing face painting, believe it or not, which is an extremely hectic job <laughs> that I did not last long in. Uh, kids are very wiggly and oftentimes sticky canvases. <laughs> it was a little bit stressful. I really enjoyed um, paint, painting the faces of like teens and adults. Um, but yeah, just kids don't want to sit still for that. Um, but their parents definitely want to, you know, turn their one-year-old into a tiger. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, so that was a uh, really challenging, uh, I ended up doing like a carnival too. So that was pretty extreme. So it was like, you know, hundreds of children hopped up on sugar running around, no parental uh, people in sight. So it's like, please help me, <laughs> it's too hectic. Okay, just a few dots here and there, but adding a couple pretty dots to things uh, is something that really looks good uh, when you're doing face painting. Uh, so that's something that I still end up using and sometimes in my acrylic paintings. Okay, then you can add any more little white highlights that you want uh, here and there. And the piece de la resistance, lots of good colors. 
that we introduced today. Okay, that is all the uh, instruction that I have for you guys today. I hope you liked today's painting. It's kind of on the maybe slightly intermediate side. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the art club or over on Patreon. Uh, so thanks again for watching and until next time, stay creative.